How's it going YouTube? Back on the camper again today. As I said in the last video, I think the first thing we need to do really is get this suspension lifted. Just makes everything else a lot easier because then I can get underneath it to do like the bull bar and the side bars and everything else a lot easier. So that's what we're going to do today. It's going to be a bit out of sequence to a normal lift kit because obviously on there I've already got the coilovers so we'll take those off in a little bit. I've got some stock suspension here and I've got a lift kit there. So let's have a look what we've got. Right, there we've got the stock suspension, two front legs, two rear dampers, two rear springs, and those two little bits that go under the springs on the back. We'll have a, we'll have a look where they go later. So there's the stock suspension that's going on. We've got to fit this lift kit. Let's have a look what comes in it. Right, these were off of eBay. I'll put a link in the description, actually. These are PCD Professional Custom Design. Uh, this is a 25mm uh, lift kit. Uh, so in the box we've got some instructions, we'll have a look at that in a bit. Uh, we've got a little bag, we've got these two little spacer nuts, I'm assuming they go on the top of the struts there, we'll see that later. And in here we've got another box that's got the spacers themselves. Right, let's take these out and then we'll have a, a proper look at everything. Right, so let's have a look what these do and where they go. Right, so what we've got in the kit, you can see it's actually etched on which ones they're for. This one says uh, front spacer, 25mm. Uh, you've got an instruction book for each. They're the rear, they're the front. Right, the rear, they sit literally, they space out this bit. So they sit under that bit. We'll have a look on the vehicle exactly where, but they sit under there and then that spaces that up 25 mil. The front, they sit between this rubber and this metal. So they're going to sit in there one, one way or the other. I'll figure that out when we've got it to pieces. They sit in there. And then this little nut here, this goes on underneath to space it. So we've got to get some spring compressors on there. Hold those down so I can take this top off and then we'll fit these in. I've got a set of 10 tools, spring compressors. Make sure you don't try bodging these like some people do. Use a proper set of spring, spring compressors. Compress this spring down so we can undo this top nut and then we can take all this to pieces. Right, there you are, there's the weight off, off this top cap now. So to get this uh, top nut off here, it's a bit of a weird size. We've got a, a 21 mil nut. I've got every spanner except a 21, so I'm gonna have to use this adjustable, which is not ideal. And then to stop the shock spinning, we've got a seven mil Allen key to put in there. So we can use that to break it. There we are. Right, so now if I take this top nut off, I can strip down this shock now. Top nut off, we'll take this top cone off, take this top plate off, I'll get this spring off out of the way. Right, to fit this lift kit, we've got to first got to put this little spacer bolt on the shock. So we put that little chamfered bit towards the top and these little flat bits, we put those towards the bottom. So that goes on like that. Quick nip up, just to make sure it's tight. There we are, we've added 25 mil to the top of that. All right, so how it sits, we've got this chamfered bit that goes on the top, that sits on top of the spring, that sits on top, the rubber sits on top of that, and then we bolt it all back together. So let's get this back on. All right, so it all goes back on like that. Drop it back in, top nut back on, tighten that back up. Keep going until it's tight. All right, there we are, nice and tight. Get these spring compressors back off and then that all will be done. There's one done. In theory, that's 25 mil higher. I stand this up against the stock one. Should be able to see a decent difference there. I'll get this other one done and then we'll go a bit further, shall we? Right, there we are. There's both of the fronts done. Uh, we don't need to do anything with the rear yet. What I'll do is we'll get the van jacked up on the front and we'll take these coilovers off and we'll fit these back on. That's the next job. Right, and before we start, let's have a quick look where we sat now, just so we can have a bit of a comparison. Remember, this is on the, the VMAX Ultra. This is how the rears sat. These, these are actually wound up quite a lot to what, uh, what you can do with the suspension. And the front is as well. I've wound that up quite a lot. So it's not quite a standard height, but let's see the difference when we fit these on. 
So I'm going to get this jacked up now and get on axle stands at the front. Then we can do the front suspension. All right, I've got the front end jacked up. I've got it on axle stands on the chassis underneath. So it's nice and high. Uh, I've got this wheel off ready. So now we can, we can have a look. You can see the VMAX coilovers there. You can actually see these ones look. They're wound up nearly to the top. So it's got all this you can go down. So if you're wanting some really low coilovers, these are the ones to get. Because when I first fitted them, I, I wound them right down. And this side rail, it literally fell on the floor when I, when I took it off the, the stand for the first time. These are really low coilovers if you wanted to get low. And they're not bad priced either. The nightmare of changing is all coming back to me now because I remember this has got a clamp at the bottom. You've got two bolts at the back. This clamps around the bottom of the strut. That's a bit of a nightmare to get off from what I remember. At the top, I think it's behind this cover here. So we have to take the top of this air box off. Then we have to get to take that cover off and then we can get to the top of the strut. And over this side, it's pretty similar, but it's behind here, I think. I'm sure you can pull that up and you can get in that way and then get to it that way. We'll have a look at that when we get to it, when I do the other side. But before we do anything at all at the top, we need to get this bottom off. So I need to undo those bolts and then I need to see how tight this is on. I think before I used like a metal wedge or something, which I've, I've not got here, so this could be fun. Right, these two bolts around this back here, usual Volkswagen, they're a weird size. They're 18 mil. Let's get those out. DeWalt impact driver, best thing I've ever bought. Makes everything so much easier. And because it's impacted out rather than pulling on a ratchet, you don't round off nuts the same as what you do with a ratchet. So first job, we've got to get this off somehow. Right, I've come up with a cunning plan. The bolt I took out, I've put it in from this side, the opposite side. I've put that in the gap in between, so the bolt's pushing against it, and then it's opened up the clamp from behind. I've just tightened it up a little bit, and now this is literally, this has dropped. It's got a little gap at the top, so I should be able to work it off now. It's just, it's opened that up enough. Let's take out these hoses, get those out of the way of the strut. Right, before I take this strut off completely, I want to take this off. All right, and to take that off, we've got a 19mm nut and a 5mm Allen key to hold it steady. So let's get that off. Right, there we are. There's everything off the bottom. Now we've got to go up the top. Right, so I've taken that little cover off. You can see inside, you see that cap? If I reach in, take that cap off, there's the top of the leg. You need two spanners in there, one to hold the top and one to undo the nut to let it out. So it's a bit fiddly, so I can't really do a video of it. So I'm going to get in there and I'm going to take that off. And then that leg should drop down. Let's get it off. There's the VMAX off. Let's put this back on now, shall we? This is literally just the opposite. We put this up in the top first. There's not a lot of thread left now because we've got there. We'll see what this is like when it's on. And this gets, puts the little Allen key in the end the same. This one had a 10 mil spanner. This one's got an Allen key to hold it while you tighten the nut up. Right, that's that on. That was a much bigger pain than expected because obviously this, this sticks down further it's further than that will go down and the the drive shaft hits that little bit there so you, you can't get it to go down low enough so you've got to lift this leg up so then you can slot it in the top uh, doing that was a bit dodgy i've uh, i didn't video that bit because it's not the best way i've did it i did it with like a bar and pushed it under there and jacked it up so it's not the best way to do it i don't know the best way to do that but that's what i've got to do so anyway it's back together Right, and in the top, you can see it's literally the bolt is right up to the top of the nut. So I don't know how these ones go on where they're advertising 30 mil lift because you'd have run out of nut, to be honest. So 25 mil and the thread just goes all the way through the nut. Any more than that and the nut even wouldn't even be able to get on that bolt. So I don't know how they, those ones work that are advertising 30 mil. That's that side done. I'm going to put the wheel back on and then I'm going to do the other side. I'll put that back together as well. Uh, the other side, it's exactly the same. 
except this top bit how you get in is different so when i get to that bit i'll uh, i'll show you but apart from that it's exactly the same so we'll not bother looking about this bit here right this is all off at the bottom i've just got to do the top to get to the top there's a little bolt there to take out there's one under there to take out then this black plate slips out and then you can you can get under there and behind let's take that off and we'll have a quick look now you can see in there right just behind these wires there it is there's the bolt to do the top and i'll get back to you when this one's back on the car and then we can do the rear right front's done that's all back together i've got the rear end jacked up and i've got the rear wheel off i've got the axle stand and the trolley jack under there just in case uh, so this should be a bit easier this one you've literally got the damper with a bolt at the bottom see if i can get a better view of it you've got a bolt at the bottom and then up up inside there there's a bolt at the top as well so if we undo that damper then we should be able to push that down and get that spring out there right these stock ones they'll sit like that up to the body and this spacer this chamfered edge here this goes up to the top that'll sit on top so we've got to squish that back in and then we'll have to push that arm back up to bolt these standard dampers on i might have to get a jack under it or something to get it up far enough to bolt that on we'll we'll see once it's off so i'm going to get the v-max ones off see if we can get these in and see how we go right there's the v-max out right we've got that one in you can't see it very well obviously on this damper the bottom nut and bolt was 22 mil and the one at the top was an 18 mil and then you just have to undo the anti-roll bar on both sides and then this leg will drop down so you can get that spring in that spacer went at the top you can't really see it but it was how it was mounted earlier so i'll get this wheel back on drop this side down and then we'll do the other side right this one goes in this way up the chamfer goes to the top on there and that's how that one sits so let's get that in there that's the second side done uh, one thing to note you see there the anti-roll bar hanging down three of the four bolts sheared off so i've got to drill those out and tap them and fit some new bolts that's a job for another day but just to be aware of if you're doing this and you've got to take the anti-roll bar off it might not come off as easy as what you think so i'm going to put the wheel back on and then we'll have a look around the other side how this van sits all right there we are we're off the axle stand let's have a look around the other side that's how it's sitting now it obviously looks ridiculous on these wheels get down a bit lower that's how it's sitting on the stock suspension with 25 mil lift kit there's the rear the gaps are pretty even to be honest i'll see what it's like after a drive but obviously i can't do that until i've done the anti-roll bar so the next job for me is either extracting or drilling and tapping those anti-roll bar studs and putting some new ones in next job for a video is getting this front bull bar fitted seeing if i've got to make any modifications to this bumper and then taking the bumper off and then we'll either paint the bumper or we'll paint the bull bar and then we've got to fit the side steps that sort of thing so i'll make it up in the next video but definitely we've got to get this bull bar fitted and see if we've got to modify the front bumper at all and then take the front bumper off that's the next job so let me know what you think of this obviously it looks ridiculous like i said with these wheels it looks like one of those donk mobiles doesn't it but when that when those new wheels come that'll look awesome sat like that subscribe if you want to see more of this don't forget to like the video because that helps loads and i'll catch you guys later cheers <laughs>